Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Circle of Debate podcast. Don't see TV as one Ivan C. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I have an honorary guest in the show. Finally got him on the show this time because all of you guys will fall to the wrecking ball. Chris, how are you, brother? I'm doing well. I just got back from the gym, uh, training, training for a couple of big matches that I got coming up. I got a... Uh, got a uh, Chris Moljo at Northeast Wrestling's um, show at the Mid Hudson Civic Center this Saturday. Mid Hudson Civic Center is like where we used to have all the old Monday Night Raws. We used to have all the ECWs at. Uh, it's in Poughkeepsie, New York. Then the week after, I got Moose at oh. GSW. Yeah, uh, I cannot wait for that one. I mean, how excited are you for that now that you, you know you're facing Moose? I mean. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. I enjoyed the match that you had with Michael Elgin. I enjoyed it. Awesome. Phenomenal fucking match. I love it. it it's, just, it's amazing from the beginning to the end. Overall, even though you did not, you know, that the win, you know, didn't win, but you put a hell of a show with Michael Elgin. I, I give you kudos to that. And now looking forward with Moose, I'm, are you excited? How excited are you? Hell yeah, I'm excited. It's just, uh, you know, I came up short against Michael Elgin, but this is another shot to prove that I'm one of the best heavyweights in the world. Um, for whatever reason, I don't know what it is, but I've kind of been under the radar. And I shouldn't be. Um, I've had matches in Impact and Future of Honor on like Explosion, Future of Honor for Ring of Honor. I just have, haven't had a contract. I've been under the radar, and I've really been busting my ass um, in the gym, at training, to take myself to the next level. And I think a good match with Moose, beating Moose, could you know show the world that I'm ready for a contract. I'm ready for the next oh, level. I'm ready, you know, to uh, be a top guy. Oh, man, you are, absolutely. And that's why you are the dream open weight champion, you know, for Global Syndicate Wrestling for that reason. And then now, you know, facing moves, yeah, it, I believe, honestly, it feels like, yes, I agree, it's, you're underrated for sure. You remind me of a Bam Bam Bigelow, Rado, you know, Vader, uh, Stan Hansen style. Just your style of wrestling that you put on, you know, that you bring to the ring itself, to your opponents, it, it, that's what it reminds me of, a mixture of each one of them. And... You do phenomenal work, man, and I and I'm with you. That you have why haven't been get picked up? Why? Why did, have you got not gotten the contract yet? Vince McMahon or Tony Khan make a call? Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, exactly. Um, and I think this is just uh, a great way to showcase myself. Another great way to showcase myself, and I'm very thankful for the opportunity from from Brandon um, to put myself in that chance to put myself in that spotlight and, you know he he gave me the ball and he's letting me run with it and normally you know when I played football I was an offensive lineman I was a blocker so I didn't get the ball at all so now <laughs> I have the ball and I'm running with it <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely so when you won the dream open weight title uh, when you found out you were going to win it, how did, how did you feel overall? Like, oh, oh, oh he's really giving me the, the belt already. Like, oh, wow. Like, I was like, how was that feeling winning that dream open, you know, like, weight title? It was good. It was, um, it was a good opportunity knowing that GSW has faith in me and uh, that I get to represent GSW. You know, half of it is like, thank you for the opportunity, and half of it, is like it's about goddamn time, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely, and it, and it's like you you came a long way, especially I know that alongside with Joe Galvano and you know Chris Mojo, uh, I believe you guys were uh, all three of you guys were under the same wing on Team 3D Academy, am I correct? Or yes, um, there are Team 3D Originals. I've kind of um, I've been. Team 3D has been my home for the past, like, two, two and a half years. I don't even remember when I started. Um, I've kind of trained all over the place in the Northeast. Um, my original school was at PWA um, with in Connecticut with someone who's not known. Then um, I trained with uh, Matt Haven uh, and Mike Bennett. Uh, 
they're both in the kingdom and ring of honor to even the former world champion uh, ring of honor world champion uh, a little bit with uh, slick wagner brown um and now it's yeah team 3d with bubba ray Dudley, Tommy dreamer that's awesome that's awesome mm-hmm. and uh so far like what have you like learned by far from each of those individuals like what is it that you took like picking their brain like that caught your attention came okay, I need to take this away from better Taven you know Ray and Tommy Dreamer like like the little nitpicks of what you you know so far by far have learned from each one of them like did you took took all that and obviously created your 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 own style in the ring mm-hmm. um so you know um so Taven uh so Taven was like basically a, a cool older brother that um that's experienced everything too and he's helping me he just uh he helped me with confidence he helped me with fire you know that's one of the things a lot of people you know lack is like sometimes the most important thing is the fire and the emotion the intensity um who was also there that helped me a lot was uh at that same school was Vinny Marcellia uh the horror king he was good with like character development and um, like trying to keep me you know trying to make wrecking ball make sense in all facets whether it's the ring inside the ring outside the ring um mike bennett was just good uh good psychology and um like in-ring emotion uh, Bubba Ray Dudley and Tommy Dreamer were, were just both heavy on psychology, um, protecting my size. Um, Bubba Ray Dudley, even though I gained some weight back, uh, helped me lose weight. So at my heaviest when I came into Team 3D, I was at 430. I got down to like 325, 330. Oh, that's awesome. Um, now I'm like legitimate 370, 375. Um, it's not where I w- want to be. Want to drop a little more weight, but you know, um, it, he he definitely pushed me to lose weight uh, and get healthier and that, move better and have better in ring cardio. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And let me ask you this: um, so what? You know, how did it start? It actually, your journey to in professional wrestling. How did it all became about? Though? Like, how did you get involved? Like, what? What got you starts to like, okay, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Uh, you know, the sport of professional wrestling, how did that journey begin all about? Uh, um, so I always wanted to be a wrestler. Uh, I watched wrestling growing up. Um, I was in and out of it, like, depending, like, um, depending the stage of my life. Like, I was big in elementary school, middle school. Watched it a little bit here and there in high school, then picked it up, like, really again at the end of college. Um, Once I finished playing college football, I played for a good Division II school, Southern Connecticut State University. Um, uh, Once my football career was over, there was a training school in New Haven. New Haven is uh, the the same time the, the school was in. Uh, the, the the Southern Connecticut was in New Haven. The wrestling school was also in New Haven. So once I was on football, um, you know, I had to pursue my dream. That's awesome, man. That's um, awesome. It, was, it was a smaller school named PWA, uh, Pro Wrestling Academy CT. Um, that's where I got my start. Um, yeah. Um, then from there, you know, I progressed to train with Matt Taven and Mike Bennett after a couple of years. Matt Taven, and Mike Bennett, and Vinny Marcellia. Um, my football career um, was okay. Um, I, I had a few injuries, like, when I played. Mm-hmm. They don't affect me now or whatever, but, you know, your college career has a finite timeline. And I had a couple of foot surgeries that sidelined me, so my career wasn't as good as I wanted to be. I was a starter. I was good. I was when I was healthy, but I had like two or three foot surgeries and I had screws in my feet, and you know those are again they don't affect me now whatsoever. 
but it's something that, um, you know, just I have to miss seasons and you only know, get a limited amount of seasons, you know? Yeah. That's unfortunate. I'm pretty sure like if none of that would have happened, maybe you, your career could have been different. Maybe you could have been right now in the NFL. You never know, yeah. right? You never know. No. So, I mean, sometimes it's, uh, you know, some, sometimes it's a blessing in disguise. You know? but, oh, absolutely. But, yeah, but definitely, I mean, at least, I mean, at least you're healthy, you're okay now. Mm-hmm. And that's all that matters, you know, and you're doing something that you love, and uh, which is mm-hmm. professional wrestling. Yeah, um, part of me wishes that, like, so I'm, I'm mixed on it. Like, part of me is, like, um, you know, I wish I would have walked around at a Division One school. Then also another part of me is like, ah, I wish I didn't play football in college and started wrestling younger. But I don't know. I think everything happens for a reason, like you said. Yeah. yeah definitely. I mean, and right now, yes, you do need a contract. And someone needs to pick, at least, if not WWE, AW, at least maybe New Japan, Ring of Honor, maybe. Or even, heck, even Impact. I mean, right now, like, to the way how the sport is growing and how so many different promotions are elevating now. And there's no longer just one promotion. And that's the beauty of mm-hmm. it now. And the same goes for, you know, for GSW, how, you know, it developed and how it grown. And so how did it become about, you know, with the relationship with Brandon and how did he give you a call to, you know, before he even began, you know, the first show in GSW, how did that become the relationship between you and Brandon? Um, so what started was, um, he was doing camera work for another show called Invictus Pro Wrestling there in New Jersey. Um, he saw me wrestle uh, Monster Mac. Monster Mac was uh, part of the part of the Hit Squad with Dan Moth back in the day, like Ring of Honor original, Jersey All Pro original. Um, I saw the flyer for GSW. Um, I saw. Um, they had a bunch of names. They had like Alex Hammerstone. Initially, they had Joe Doring, who uh, he's in he's in Impact now, and he um, he was an All Japan guy. And um, I was like, oh wow, this looks like an you know, up and coming company. They're only three hours away. Uh, I know I saw Geo was booked. I messaged Geo, asked him who who the promoter was. He told me Brandon. I contacted Brandon. And he said, um, he's like, I'm sorry, we're actually booked up. And um, something opens, I'll let you know. And it's like, normally when you hear that, it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's like when you're like a, in high school trying to fill out an application somewhere and they're like, uh, thanks for the application. We are not hiring at this time, but we promise we'll keep it on file and give you a call back. And normally, normally you're like, all right, sure, whatever. <laughs> then like <laughs> a week or a couple weeks later, he messaged me and said, uh, something happened, a spot opened up for me. And um, initially the match was supposed to be against Davey Boy Smith Jr. Something happened with him. I don't know what happened. Um, and then it turned to be, be me versus Michael Elgin. And, you know, every match I performed at or above expectations. And, uh, you know, Brandon, Brandon and I uh, got along. Um, we liked my performance. And we connected um, also on a personal level as well. That's awesome. That's great. And I'm pretty sure he was – he was in love with that match as well as I was, you know, just you and Elgin. I don't who ever thought. And then, like, the, the moves, the way how you just move in the ring overall, man, I, I tell you, I give it to you, the fact that you remind me, of, you know, those three individuals that I mentioned earlier, like mm-hmm. Bigelow, Vader, and Stan Hansen, just the style. It's just, like, the strong style that you have and the, and the agility that you have. Um, but overall, I mean, I, I got to give it to you for that match. Love it, top notch. And I can't wait for the one for Moose. Uh, so that's the one I'm really excited for. And, you know, now the question is being now, you being the Dream Open Weight champion. I mean, I asked Brandon, okay, so what do you, how do you feel of that belt? And, of course, that belt is like his, you know, intercontinental U.S. belt. Mm-hmm. So are we going to see down the line later in the future maybe you challenging Hammerstone if he still is 
the GSW heavyweight champion. Are we going to see that down the line? Title for title? Maybe in the near future? <laughs> I don't know what Brandon's plans are, but I certainly want to uh, face Hammerstone. <laughs> <laughs> It's almost like the uh, 2021 version of Hogan and Bundy, or yeah. Hogan and Earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> Earthquake's another guy I look up to. Oh, Kento, yeah, Kento was it's another phenomenal worker, man. You know, God rest his soul. But yeah, Earthquake was great in the ring, man. Great overall. Oh, he was well. awesome, and he's one of those people where it's like, and I, I kind of identify with this. Like a lot of people. Say he was literally the nicest, most kind, caring guy backstage, but he was also the baddest mother trucker out there. Like, oh, yeah. And so I identify with that because I really am a nice guy, a nice person backstage. I, you know, I try to go out of my way to help people and help out. Just, I try to be a good person, but at the same time, don't fuck with me. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, there you go. Exactly. And it shows in the ring, yeah, don't fuck with me at all, see, because that's like everybody <laughs> will fall to the Wrecking Ball. Exactly. <laughs> and speaking of uh, the, main, the name Wrecking Ball, how did that become about? How did that become in fruition, uh, you know, with Wrecking Ball? So, so that was um, – so that was the um, first name I picked. I don't know. It was just through a list of names. Um you know, I was just always like, I tr I try to pick something that would make sense that that represents what I look like, something that represents how I wrestle, and it makes sense. I break shit, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, you know, that's that's how I played football. That's how I play, That's how I wrestled in high school. That's. You know, like that makes sense. I look like a racking ball. I wrestle like a racking ball. Like I'm, you know, I, that, that was the first, um, for, yeah, it made sense. It was the first thing that I really came up with and I ran with it. And Ligurski was from um, an offensive lineman that was on, on the Steelers. He wasn't like a prominent, like, dude. He was a, uh, he was always like the sixth man in the offensive line, or if they had like if they were in a short yarded situation, they would put him at fullback. Doug, I don't know. Doug Ligurski was like the you could tell he's like the working class dude who will do whatever he can, and he busts his balls, and he's a tough dude. And I and I think the to the total package of wrecking ball Ligurski, like it. I don't know it. The name. To me, catches attention, and a lot of people are like, "Wrecking Ball Ligurski." Hmm, I want, I want to see who that is. Like, yeah. even if they, if they don't know me, or I've seen people comment on like posters that I'm on. They're like, "Wrecking Ball Ligurski." That's that's my new favorite wrestling name is name, and I have no idea who he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's awesome! Man. Wait, so you're, so you well, you're a Steeler fan? What's up? Are you a Steelers no, fan? No, I'm actually a, Gi a Giants fan, but uh, Steelers were, like, heavily covered and whatnot, like, um, whenever, you know, the Giants weren't doing well. Yeah. Let's we'll see how this season goes. We don't know how it is Honestly, this season. I haven't watched football, in, like, in forever. Um Oh, it's man. just uh, once, once, like, for me, Sundays are like my day off or my day to rest or whatever. And the Giants haven't been very good in a while, <laughs> so there's no need to like lose any sleep or rest on a Sunday. For right, a, sh a shitty football team, you know. <laughs> <laughs> They're still my team. I'd still root for them if I was up and their game was on. I would totally watch it, but no need to wake up for me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, they're, they're rebuilding. Everybody's like, them especially. They're rebuilding a lot, like the roster. So it's like they need to, they need to find a new quarterback, a good one. Though. So, but we'll see. We'll see what happens with the Giants. I'm a Niner fan, so yeah, don't don't worry. We're rebuilding too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but definitely. Um, do you remember your first match? Was it a singles that you had for the first time, or was it a tag? 
Oh, your first match. My first match was um, a tag match, and it was out of state. It was in Massachusetts. It was me uh, in this uh, it was me, and his name was like TKO, not TKO Ryan from mm -hmm. the Kingdom, which I I wrestled him down the uh, line. It was someone. His name was TKO versus uh, Pedro Juan Dones. Um, he's a Johnny Rods guy, and oh. this guy Mega Muerte, who looked like a million bucks. He was a bodybuilder. Um, went pretty well. I don't honestly don't remember if I won or not. I had a good performance. Um, and my second match was um, a tag match against uh, T that my partner, who was my partner the first night, TKO. I wrestled with him in my first singles match in Connecticut. Oh, awesome. And how's, the, how's the environment now, like before the pandemic, like with the fan, fan base? Uh, you know, when they were barely learning about Reg and Bone. I mean, how was it with, with the fan base? Was there, you know, you know, because I'm not familiar over there in the Northeast. How mm -hmm. is it? So, like, how's the fan base over there before the whole pandemic occurred? You know, how was, you know, how was the fan base? How was the crowd? No, I mean, so the, the big thing with me, with, like the big disconnect is always like, I'm always looking for the the, the quote-unquote buzz, if you will. Yep. And I never got the buzz, but I always connected well with the crowds, no, no matter, like, whether I'm a face, whether I'm a heel, I connected one way or the other with the crowds. Um, you know, sometimes, even though you're really not supposed to, sometimes, like, I would get cheered as a heel just because a lot of times – when I'm on a wrestling show and there's like dorky little guys with kick pads and I'm a big monster, people people just tend to cheer for the larger than life character as opposed to the, you know, 20 dorks with kick pads on the rest of the show. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but no, I always had a good fan base. Um, I, I honestly think one of, if not the best fan bases in New England and potentially the Northeast. It's just there was a di discrepancy between like real life reactions, which I get good reactions, and you know the Twitter world, and it, oh my that's God. part of the that's part of the frustrating part of trying to quote unquote get buzz and whatnot. You know, right. I I like Northeast wrestling. Um, draws some of the biggest crowds. Like we again, we wrestled. We're going to wrestle, and we've wrestled um, at the Mid Hudson Civic Center. We we do Six Flags New England, which or uh, Six Flags New, a Great Escape in New Jersey. That gets about five thousand people. We did. We had Cody Rhodes versus Kurt Angle in a cage match, and we had um, we've had the Young Bucks versus the Hardys. We've had Jerry Lawler versus Kevin Owens. Like we have all these marquee matchups. We run in stadiums. We run in you know, we sell out high schools, but then, like, someone with horrible gear doing a dangerous stunt that lands on his neck, who wrestles in a barn in the Midwest, gets all this Twitter buzz. It's like, come on. Like, no one, <laughs> no one actually cares about this person, or it's like, a lot of people have, like, goofy gimmicks that goofy, ironic gimmicks that no one actually cares about in real life, but it's just like a lot of people tweet about them. It's like, uh, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's the social media life there, man. That's the, that's the world, I guess, in Twitter, the Twitter world. And it's, so it gets overbearing and overwhelming too, like shit like that. It's like, nobody cares, you know, but yeah, people like yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> and the... Um, you know, the Twitter world is like a, a, a very vocal minority. And I think a lot of the major companies cater to that vocal minority and to a, almost to a fault because, you know, like these are just a few voices, but these, these voices are loud and in your face as opposed to like, does the casual fan get this? Like, 
is 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 the casual fan gonna get this goofy, dumb, ironic gimmick, or is the casual fan gonna, you know, want want a guy who's six foot four, three hundred eighty five pounds, he's athletic and intense, and you know, yeah, that definitely, yeah, that's for sure. Um, so I, I see that you also you were in um. Impact for quite some time. I know you did. I, I think you and Gio, I spoke to Gio about it before when I had him on the show. You uh-huh. guys, you guys drove up to Canada, up north. And I think they booked you on the last minute show for House of Hardcore and, and Impact. Uh, and how was the crowd, the fan base over there in Canada when you? So I, I didn't do the Canada show. That was at a different time before I was oh, okay. with uh, Team 3D. Uh, he got booked with uh, Moljo. Um, no, I've been booked, um, you know, for impact on standalone impact shows. Like me and Gio actually did, uh, explosion. Um, you know, I got to wrestle, uh, Madman Fulton, uh, I think last November. I also did two years ago, explosion. I wrestled cousin Jake, who is now currently Jake something. Yeah. Um, no, I, Everything reacted well. Everything. Um, you know, the November was not in front of the, – the more recent one was not in front of a crowd, but I got good feedback from everyone in the back. It seemed like it was leading somewhere, but unfortunately I don't have a contract. So, yeah. you know, the only thing is to keep moving forward um, and keep busting my ass and hopefully, you know, the match with Moose will be the next step in that. Oh, yeah. I believe it will. I think that match itself is going to deliver. And by far, you have delivered a lot of the matches. And um, one of that, so by far right now in your career that you've been in, in, in the sport for some quite some time, mm-hmm. what has been by far your defining moments in your career? Like, what are your defining moments? Uh, you know, so with GSW, um, it was winning the Dream Open White title. Uh, I mean, Every, pretty much everything in GSW has been, you know, a great experience, like keeping up with Elgin, even though I didn't win, um, winning the GSW, the Open Dream Open Weight title. Uh, at Northeast, I won their heavyweight title a couple of years ago. I beat Flip Gordon, who's in Ring of Honor. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a great moment, and that title has a lot of lineage. Um, the first the first heavyweight champion for Northeast Wrestling was Bam Bam Bigelow, so I don't like using this term, but it was kind of a mark-out moment knowing that I held the same title that Bam Bam Bigelow held. Uh, Bam Bam Bigelow has held it. Psycho Sid's held it. Cody Rose has held it. Um, Warbeard Hansen, who is now known as Ivar, um, with the uh, the Viking Raiders has held it like it, it it has that title has a lot of lineage. Oh man, it definitely it does. I mean, that's a historic title too, especially you know for Northeast Wrestling, and they yeah. got a lot of upcoming great shows. I mean, I've been watching their product as well, and then uh, you know seeing that they're gonna have a you know show coming up this weekend. Oh, it's, it's a stacked show that you guys have. It's as it's gonna be amazing. Is it again? You're gonna have a hell of a week. You got this one coming up, and you have um, obviously you moves. So I'm pretty sure you're definitely excited for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me ask you this now. I'm pretty sure you, everybody asked from you know marquee question, but if you could book a match yourself from either from the past, from the present, and one person, and would it be at a WrestleMania? Would it be at to, uh, you know Wrestle Kingdom at the, at the Tokyo Dome? Or where will you book yourself and with and against who? WrestleMania, um, probably Madison Square Garden and Bam Bam Bigelow. <laughs> oh man, I, I had a feeling you were going to say it, Bam Bigelow. Yeah, I had a feeling <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, man. no, and and you kind of you know put it together. Uh, Bam Bam Vader and Sam Hansen are three of my favorites. It took a while for me to get into Stan Hansen because he's 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 honestly like the most surprisingly badass guy ever. Like if you take a quick look at him, like he's a, he's obviously a big guy, but he kind of looks like an uncle who wears like a kiss the cook apron at a barbecue, 
you know <laughs> <laughs> he, he he wears he wears those those new balances you know the ones i'm yeah. talking about the white and blue ones <laughs> but he is one of the baddest dudes alive especially back back in his day he was one of the baddest mother truckers out oh, there yeah. Hell yeah, and he, he just was, he man. just looked like a an uncle who loved to grill <laughs> <laughs> who likes to really drink beers and you know just relax yeah. on the couch watching a game <laughs> oh shit you, you discovered my uncle honestly because he's the one he's like, a new balance watch this I'm like oh shit that's my uncle <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, ma- the mall walkers yes oh they don't buy shit they just walk in the mall for no reason sometimes <laughs> like why are we here we're not buying anything <laughs> Oh shit! Oh my god, that's hilarious. That is. And hilarious. I use those same pair. I, I have the same pair now, but they have. There's an Adidas one. They they had the Nike. They had the New Balance ones. Because because there's there's a pair of Nike New Balance. They're the same shit. It's just one's Nike, one's New Balance. And now they have the Adidas one. So I'm rocking those now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. So now, what's gonna be the feature for? Wrecking Ball Ogurski. What are the goals? I mean, you already said a contract, but I mean, are you open to any promotion at this moment? I mean, yeah, you've seen I mean, the product, how it is by far right now, how it's been, you know, transitioning, how it developed, how it's different now. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know how, I mean, what do you, what are your thoughts about the product so far, the, the current state of wrestling and where, if you had the opportunity, where would you actually? Honestly, it, it doesn't matter where, I mean, anything, I, can, I think I can make anything anywhere work. And I think if, if someone, you know, like Brandon's doing at GSW, if someone gives me the ball anywhere, I could take it and run with it. Um, somewhere like NWA, somewhere, um, you know, I could fit in NXT. Um, I could fit in New Japan. I could fit in All Japan. I could fit in AEW. Um yeah, I mean, it, it really doesn't matter where, just as long as I, you know, keep progressing. You know, the ultimate goal is to, you know, make a full-time living off of wrestling and wrestling only. Um, and part of, like, what's so shocking and frustrating and mysterious and whatnot is that, like you said, there's so many different opportunities, so many different companies, Impact, AEW, WWE, NWA, that's the crazy part of like, it's like, not one of them has, um, you know, given me the opportunity to, to like, I've gotten matches, you know, for some of the different companies I've gotten tryouts, but no one's really given me the chance. And that's, that, that's the most surprising um, aspect of that. So as frustrating as it is and annoying as it is, and as much of it, it's like, huh, why haven't they picked me? Why not me? That also gives me motivation to keep working my ass off, to keep training, to keep lifting, to keep running, to keep doing what I could do to be the best version of my, to be the best version of myself for when I do get on the TV. Definitely, you know? definitely, yeah. I mean, definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm waiting too. I'm waiting for you. I'm like, hello. <laughs> Somebody knocked on the door, for God's sake. Yeah. Shit. Fuck, give him a contract already. Shit. You get a MOW, mm-hmm. Core Bauer, for God's sake. Give him MOW. They're, they're growing yeah. too. You know? Right. So, and so many. I mean, even, I know AAA, another one, you know, AAA in Mexico, they're barely, mm-hmm. barely coming back. So, I mean, how was it for you actually throughout that year? I mean, I know, I'm pretty sure you were train, training at home, and I know it was pretty frustrating. Like, no shows at all during the air that you know pandemic era how was it for you at the time and i mean it was very stressful because you you couldn't be able to be booked like i'm assuming because of all of you know yeah you know there was a period of three four five six months i'm not honestly i don't know the full timeline of like when gyms open and like training opens again but like at least three plus months no um, going to the gym or going um, to, to a wrestling gym. I was able to do workouts at home, uh, which was good. Um, I live in an apartment complex and we have, you know, they 
let us work out in the basement. I was able to borrow some weights from my local gym, which was a nice thing that they did. The gym I had was like, was like, okay, hey, gyms are closed, but we'll let everyone borrow some weights for the X amount of months. So I did stuff at home with like kettlebells, dumbbells, and resistance bands and agility ladders. You know, it was something. It wasn't exactly what I wanted or wanted it to be, but you know what? It was something. Um, but it was tough, you know. It was tough not wrestling. It was tough, um, you know, even watching old wrestling because you would watch something with a crowd and you'd be like, damn, I miss that crowd. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I, I didn't know what that means because I miss going to shows. I was like, shit. I, yeah, I was frustrated. The fact that we could have no shows or anything here in California. And then when we started seeing Florida, they started having shows. I'm like, who in the fuck are we going to have shows here in California? Yeah, yeah. Shit. We're getting yeah, frustrated. Yeah. And barely now. So I'm, I'm happy that it's barely happening. You know, they're barely going to start doing shows. I mean, they started once already. Uh, this one local promotion called uh, Millennium Pro Wrestling. Uh, they, they barely just started. So hopefully little by little, we get some shows. I told Brandon, we need GSW in California. We need it. Uh -oh. <laughs> GSW takes California. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Why not? Oh, he'll have a great fan base here as well. Because there's a lot here, you know, in California. Uh, it's it's they love their heels. I mean, I do too. Mm -hmm. But you know, they love their. There's heels. a lot of lucha libre in California, right? Yeah, it's a lot of lucha libre here. Yeah, there's so many. I mean, but um, different styles too. Very different mm -hmm. styles. I were um I had a um. I, w I worked for, I forgot the name of it, a, lu a lucha promotion um, in New York. This is pre-pandemic, but those were some of the best crowds. And um, even though Lucha Libre is a different style, a different psychology, ultimately, like, they appreciated the wrestling. You know, I, um, I got to work one of... The uh, I forgot the combination of wrestlers. One match was uh, Aer Aerostar was in both of them. Um, who, oh my god, I can't even think. Aerostar, uh, one of the psychosis. Um, oh my god. Oh my god, what's what's oh my god, what's the dragon guy? Oh, uh, it's what Dragon Lee? No, not, not Dragon Lee, right? No, no, no. no. Uh, dragon guy. Oh uh, I think Drago or, or Drake or Drago, or Drago. yes, Drago. Drago. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. I am yeah. I am so I can't believe I had, had a Joe Biden moment. Yeah, Drago. <laughs> 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 Come on, man. You know the thing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Drago, Psychosis, uh, Aerostar. I, I got to wrestle with all those guys. It was a great op uh, opportunity. Just a great experience. Just a different vibe that the uh, Lucha Libre crowd um, brought. Oh, yeah. And they were into the characters. They were into the dynamics. They were rowdy. But in a, in a good way. And then, like, um, the second match that I wrestled, I was not aware of this as part of the culture, is they started throwing money in the ring. It's like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> and that that was cool. Like, if the, if the fans appreciate a match in Mexico or Lucha Libre, they throw money in the ring. Yeah. That was awesome. It was, it was just a cool experience for a very appreciative crowd. Oh, yeah. And we do it here, too. We do it here when it's a phenomenal match. We throw money in, in the ring. We, we, yep, we have the same culture here. So, it's, yeah, like you said, it's like, yeah, we have a little mentality, like Lucha Libre fan-based mentality. But we mm -hmm. appreciate, obviously, wrestling. And, of course, we'll be like, okay, throwing ones, fives, twenties, you'll see in, in the ring. Yeah. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. What's, what's your cheat day meal of the day that you could – Eat every day. 
Jesus. Uh, honestly, lately I've had too many cheat meals. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, what I um what I really like is people. A lot of people up here give me shit about is uh, I like Domino's. So, and in Connecticut, um, New Haven, Connecticut is considered to have one of the best pizzas in the world. So is New York, New Jersey. Everyone has an argument over it. Um, and like some people, you know, get fake offended if you don't say like, oh, Pepe's is my favorite, which, you know, they do have one of the best pizzas in the world or whatever. But like, I like Domino's, you know, I'll get like, um, I love their, I love their pan pizza. It's kind of like old school pizza hut pizza. There's not a lot of pizza huts anymore. Um, oh, around here at least. Really? Wow, yeah. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Over, yeah, over here. Yeah. There's so many, but hi, that's, I'm that's unexpected. Like, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not not a lot jealous. over here, <laughs> but, um, you know, uh, I like their pan pizza. Um, I like their hand toss pizza. That's the uh, they have the garlicky crust, um, thin thin crust. I'll, I'll I'll normally do like a thin crust and either a hand toss or a pan pizza. So I'll get two mediums. I'll get an order of boneless buffalo wings and an order of the cheesy bread. Oh, uh, I make yeah, me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> But let me ask you this, though. I mean, now, now I'm curious. What is actually the staple food in Connecticut, though? Like, what is it that they're known by? Like, uh, you know how everybody pizza. has their own pizza, right? Right, right, right. Okay, okay. So that's what they're, they're mainly known by pizza. So, okay. Because I always, yeah, yeah. You, you know, I was curious about it. You know how Chicago has their own, you know, Chicago has their own. and Right. No, if you look up. Uh, if, you, if you literally, like, a lot of people are shocked to know, and, like, uh, Connecticut – D depending like which poll, but Connecticut's normally like anywhere from first to fourth best pizza in America, D depending like what poll or whatever you see. Um, one of the places Pepe's Pizza is consistently the best or top five pizza in America. And a lot of people like outside of the area don't know that. Um, so, like, a lot of people end up being, like, pizza snobs. Like, I don't know if there's anything like that with with you. Like, I don't know, like, you know, because because we're known for Pepe's, people get offended if you don't, if you like any, like, chain store or whatever, which to <laughs> me is stupid. Like, I, I don't know. Are, yeah. are you, like, what, what's California? Like, what's your... I mean, burgers, you know, obviously you come here, people want in and out right away. You know, mm -hmm. that's what they want. And uh, we're known by, we're more like a burger state, more of a burger and a hot dog joint. Um, okay. Yeah, because, I mean, we have in and out here. We have Tommy's, some of the chili cheeseburger you can have there. Um, what else are we now? All the hot dogs, go to Pink's Hot Dogs. Uh, they have, like, really, really good hot dogs as well. So that's what we're really more known here in California. We're more based on like, it's more of a hamburger culture and, and, um, hot dog culture but that's like okay. if i if i say if i can i can have more like the staple for it but mm -hmm. if you want to be more you know obviously get more into more into it with the food culture obviously we're known here by tacos <laughs> of course yeah, yeah. any mexican spot you know you know because i'm yeah, mexican yeah. too you know any mexican spot any taco spot is so does that mean like can you still eat taco bell or is that like oh no i didn't need so and so is Taco Place. I can't do Taco <laughs> Bell. I uh, I know, right? Like I, it's funny because sometimes my friends are like, "What?" Well, one of them would be like, "Well, no, Taco Bell is the best, better than Mexican tacos." Like, what? Wait a minute, no, no, no. It's just it, everything <laughs> has its difference, you know. Like, right? If you, if you want like American style taco, then you get Taco Bell or Del Taco. You get that, you know, which is perfectly mm -hmm. fine. I mean, who doesn't want to eat, you know? I right, 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 right. You know? It just the, the culture right. is very different. It's diverse. No, 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 that makes sense. Like you could, you know, you could like some like people like make this weird comparison. They're like, well, well you you like down. 
if you like Domino's, that somehow in their head means you like it better than like one of our famous places like Pepe's or Modern or whatever. It's like, no, I'm not saying that. I could like both. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Right. You can like both. So, I mean, that's just how it is over here. I mean, and trust me, a lot of people that come, like, who are not familiar with California, they automatically know it's going to be number one thing oh, In and Out. Because that's, mm -hmm. they love it, you know, In and Out. And they do have really good burgers. I mean, of course. Who doesn't love a, a I've nice never, I've never actually had In and Out for us. It's, uh, we have uh, five guys and way back. So you guys don't have Shake Shack either? We do have Shake Shack at limited locations. I have not. Um, I have personally not been to Shake Shack. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, there's some barely here, but I heard Shake Shack is like, like they're in and out on the East Coast of what I hear. Mm -hmm. So, I was okay. Like, okay. All right. I, I never from tried I, it. From what I know, like, I think we have one in either New Haven or West Haven, but. The, the spot is, like, hard to park at. Like, you could ask Brandon from GSW. I hate I hate places with, like, complicated, like, parking things. I hate parking on the – like, parking, like, two miles away on the street and having to pay a parking meter. So that, like, limits me from a lot of places. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Oh, man. I mean, where I live, it's, like – well, it's calm, but it, like over here, it's like a like in Koreatown. There's no parking at all. You, you get lucky if you find one in a meter. So if not, you will have to park two miles away from wherever your destination. And that's the bummer about it. <laughs> that's the only bummer about it here. Is parking is um, a pain in the ass and traffic's a pain in the ass too. Ooh, wow. Especially oh, the wrecking ball gets some road rage. But there you I, go. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people have wanted me to uh, <laughs> record my road rage because <laughs> I just go off on people. It's like, come on, man. The left lane is the left lane. You you either go. You go faster than the car behind you, or you get the hell out of the way. It's yeah. that, that that's it, that's it. But for you guys, you guys got like what, like eight lane highways over there? About to, yeah, some freeways, not all of them. Yeah, it's about eight Ooh. lanes. It's still traffic. It's still fucking traffic over there. The four hundred five is the one most horrible one, or the one on one freeway here. Ooh. It's the most horrible freeway of all time. Even with eight lanes. Doesn't make no fucking difference. You're still gonna be stuck in traffic. <laughs> You're still gonna be stuck in traffic. Believe me. Oh yes. man, we have like three or four lanes, maybe five at the most. Uh, um, I can't imagine eight. And, and you know what? When you speaking about road now, before I know, I'm pretty sure you were you were going on a road. You know, before the whole pandemic, you know, going mm -hmm. to different territories. Any funny stories? You don't have to mention nobody's name, but any mm -hmm. funny stories throughout the you know that time on the road. On the shows, Whew, I can't think of anything right off the top of my head. Um, oh man, shoot, I'm drawing a blank right now. It's all good, man. It's all good. I'm drawing a but blank. you, but you were on the road by yourself, or you were along with like, like with, did you travel with Geo and Mojo, or like you travel with different other people? Yeah, uh, it, it, it depend. It would depend like where we go. Um, sometimes Geo, sometimes both of them. Um, you know, we would. Uh, you know, we we wrestled in Rhode Island together and all uh, rode up together. Oh, okay, that's awesome. That's good. Well, at least you got a road buddy. I mean, and I'm happy that you know, I you know, I was saying you know, Brandon like. You know, the pinnacle for GSW is the future is yourself and Geo. You know, mm -hmm. both of you guys having those two stable championships and taking it to another different level. I mean, it's it's phenomenal to know. And I'm pretty sure you're, you know, you mentioned that you're grateful for it. But and I'm and I'm really happy that he has the trust from both of you guys, especially mm -hmm. you running with it. I mean, you can make, I mean, like I said. You're really having incredible matches right now in GSW. You're having incredible matches in, in Northeast Wrestling, Invictus. And hey, I forgot to mention even Catalyst Wrestling, too, right? You perform for Catalyst Wrestling, too, as well, right? 
Yes, Catalyst. Yep. Um, I am tag cha- uh, tag champs with Lucky Thirteen. Hey, he's one of the uh, GCW guys. Oh, awesome! That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because and, and is Catalyst still running without fan base or with fan base? How they're doing? Um, right now they do no fan base. Uh, September is going as of right now. If None of the extra BS happens. So it looks like we're going to be returning to fans in September. Oh, yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Because, yeah, one of my good friends, he's a very uh, high on Canada's wrestling. I'm not too much familiar with it. I, it's just so much mm-hmm. so much to see. There's so much oh, yeah. it's like It's hard to watch every each number, one of them. who's like, oh, my God, it's difficult. But I'm mm-hmm. hearing so great, you know, so much great, you know, from Canada's wrestling because I know – uh, Mentalist Monster has been, you know, I'm familiar with his work. Homicide, yeah. I know he's there too. I believe Homicide oh, is a champ. Homicide, homicide is, um, he's, he's a great dude. Um, he's been, like, he's uh, been, tr- like, helping me out tremendously too, um, just with psychology and different things I could try and, you know, agenting the match and, He's a really smart guy. Um, he's a really smart guy. Yeah, he's he's been in the business for quite some time, but yeah, I'm, picking that brain must be wow. You know, like he's he knows he's very knowledgeable. He's been yeah, he's been a veteran for quite some time. Yeah, so and I'm he's good. he's someone you know big on like me protecting my size and just always like. You know, just basically saying I'm the biggest, baddest, serious motherfucker there. So wrestle like it, you know. Yeah. Um, I would definitely like to see a match you and Metalist Monster. I'd like to see that. Happen. We we had a triple threat match. Um, it was like one of my last matches before the pandemic started with um, me, him, and. Uh, Elia Barats, who wrestles as Trax now, he used to he used to do OVW back in the day, but never got uh, called up to the main roster. But he's, I think he was on the last GSW show. He did it one of the pre shows. He's 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 a good dude, stocky, powerful guy, just legitimate badass. But Metal Lands Monster, uh, he. Uh, he's known as El Loso Blanco now. Yep. Um, he's he's someone else that um, it's like, why the hell does this guy not have a contract? Exactly, <laughs> dude. He's a big athletic dude. Yeah, um, he is. him. And I'm also uh, tag partners with Adam Payne, hmm. who um, we we are the pro wrestling magic tag team champions. Um, that's another promotion out of uh, New Jersey. He's another guy. He's me and him are basically the same size. Um, we want to get get out there more as a as a tag team. Uh, we actually uh, at Invictus. Me and Adam Payne uh, beat Moljo and Oso Blanco. We had a good match like a month or two ago. Oh uh, yeah, but Adam Payne, we're tag, we're tag partners, we're tag champs in pro wrestling magic. He, we're basically, um, you know, both same height, same weight. You know, the, the weight fluctuates plus or minus fifteen pounds for both of us, depending on how our diets are going and whatnot, <laughs> how the cardio is going. Um, he's another. He's another guy. It's just like, what the hell? Like, either as a singles wrestler or as a tag wrestler with me, it's like there's definitely something more out there for us, you know? Yeah, we're that, <clears throat> and that's awesome, man. And um, mm-hmm. oh, let me ask you two more questions. So, all right, uh, first one. Um, in the training academy of Team 3D, who do you feel that has that that it factor, like? that you've been training, you know, by far, that you see who's an upcoming rising star. Who is it? Who gives you that effect that, that, that this kid's going to be someone someday or he's going to make it, he's going to make it big someday. Who do you feel that from in the, in the academy? Yeah, but, um, both Moljo and Gia, um, you know, they, I mean, they offer different things, you know. Uh, Gio, right, right now he's, 
he's in the middle of finding himself and finding his character, but like, you know, he has natural charisma, natural athleticism, natural fire. He's a, an awesome athlete. He's, um, you know, instantly lovable by crowds. Like he, he definitely has that it factor. Um, and, uh, I think he's going to get signed somewhere. And Moljo, he offers something different. He's, um, you know, 6'2", 250, 260. Um, he takes a lot out of – he takes a lot from um, Razor Ramon, Mr. Perfect, Ted DiBiase. Um, he's a good – he's a good heel. He's a legitimate badass. He's a legitimate tough guy. Um and he could definitely go somewhere too. Yeah, definitely. I, I agree with that. Yeah, because uh, he does have that type of effect or that heelish eagle, you know, factor. Yeah. Like, especially like how like you mentioned it. He's just like, fuck this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He has that. Sh- he has it. I'm like, okay, yeah, I, that's, I'll get him on the show one day. I would love to talk, speak to him. But yeah, he has that it factor too, man. He does. Gio as well, he has that. He has that potential that he could make it somewhere like you you know like you know like yourself like both of you guys could be i mean right now where you guys are at this moment you guys are starting something with this company and it's going to and elevated to at its peak and that's what you guys are mm-hmm. doing and then mm-hmm. i'm assuming for a fact people will be you know noticing and i'm pretty sure people are noticing now they're saying oh my god okay it's breaking ball i'm seeing geo you know, later on, hopefully we see Mojo maybe and you know and GSW later on. As long as you guys are able to go ahead and, and elevate the the, you know, the product itself, the promotion itself, higher ups will be definitely more be noticing mm-hmm. of what you guys have been doing by far. And I guarantee you, I mean, you you will get that call. You will. You're gonna get a call. You, you'll get you go get that. You're gonna get that. Thank you, sir. Uh, and you, you just well deserve that, brother, because you do. You know, the shows, the matches you've been putting on as of late. Yeah, I don't think nobody could top that, you know, for, you know, for a heavyweight as yourself, like, to move that fast. I Tell me who has done what you've done by far. Right, I've never, right. I have not seen nobody as of yet that has done that. If if all of you subscribers that are watching, if, if I'm wrong, if we're wrong, comment below. Tell me who's done better than what a freaking ball the has done. Mm-hmm. Uh, we would like to know because I don't, I have not seen nobody <laughs> by far. And, you know, another match I actually would like to see, hopefully, I, I, I mentioned it to Brandon, we need to have a Joe Doring, Joe Doring and Wrecking Ball match. we got to have Oh, it. yeah. <laughs> Hell, yeah. I would love to see that because, I, I, you know, when Joe, you know, Doring, he does remind me a little bit of Stan. Too. Stan Hansen. Yeah. Yeah. He has, that all, <laughs> yeah. he has that all Japan style look, you know. <laughs> and he has that, you know. And to see that versus you in a match, cool. And it's going to yeah. be a hell of a slob of I'll tell you that. That's for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, we, sure. we've, we've talked about that as well. Yeah. I hope so. I hope it does happen, you know. So, I mean, you never know. I know Brandon said never say never. So, uh, he's excited. He, I think, you know, everybody's excited for this upcoming, you know, two-night event. And, I'm pretty, and I know you're excited, too. Man. And I believe you're, you're wrestling two nights, too, right? Besides moves, yeah, two I think nights. You, yeah, because you're defending the the Dream of Weight title, I believe, right? I, two nights, four matches. So geez. I'm wrestling. Yeah, um, two nights, four matches. Uh, so um, yeah, so, uh, the, the first night's actually against uh, Charlie Tiger. Um, he's one of the GCW guys. He's got a little bit of uh, indie buzz. He's with um, Jordan Oliver's group. Um, so I've got him the first night. And um, second night is Moose. And during the day of both days, we're doing the, the high voltage taping, which are the YouTube shows. So yes. four matches in two days. Oh, man. Yeah, you're going to have a busy weekend for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're going to have a busy weekend. I mean, you already have one coming up. And oh man, kudos to you, man. I commend you. I commend <laughs> you. I commend you. You deserve it. <laughs> thank right. you, man. No, thank you. And I appreciate you for coming on today, man. I appreciate you very no, much. Absolutely. And hey, if any time you want to come back, we could do a top five. We could talk. We, that's all we can do. We do top five. We do 
who talk shit about wrestling. But not in a bad, not in a bad <laughs> way. A good way in a bad way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we just, you know, we, we, we love the sport of wrestling. That's what we are here. Here on Circle Absolutely. Debate. Absolutely. Uh, before I let you go, so let the people know where can they find you on social media? So, uh, uh, Twitter is at Wrecking Ball 75. This is easier. And Instagram, unfortunately, Wrecking Ball 75. So I made the Twitter first. And then when I went to make the Instagram, um, Wrecking Ball 75 was taken by someone else, unfortunately. The Instagram is Wrecking underscore Ball underscore Ligurski. L E G U R S K Y. All right, there you have it. And in all the descriptions, the links will be right below, ladies and gentlemen. So you can follow a Wrecking Ball Ligurski on his social media platforms. And keep an eye on him because he will be tuning in. He'll be someday on your television platform. Could you see him on AEW, New Japan, Ring of Honor, NXT, you, you know, LMOW. You don't know, you know, anything. The possibilities are endless. That's the beauty of here um, in the sport. It is endless. You can be at anywhere, at any time, any place. That's the deal. But Wes, once again, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. And once again, Wrecking Bar, Ligurski, I appreciate you very much, brother, for joining me. And like I said, anytime you're welcome, you know, the doors are open. And we might do a recap, because I told Brad I might do a recap. Because I want, you know, after the event, we got to do a recap. So I would love to have oh, you and Brandon along. So that'll be fun to talk to both of you guys at the same time. That's going to be fun. So I can. Oh, like, absolutely. Yeah, I'm definitely down for that. So awesome, awesome. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in here to Circle Debate. And we'll see you guys on the next one.